What up? This is Dan from Ice Nine Kills, and I just wanted to give a shout out to the loudest podcast in all of music, The Mosh Cast, where they review albums, EPs from any and all genres. They even interview new and upcoming bands. It's a freaking great time. Keep moshing, motherfuckers. Girls. What is up, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary folks, or whatever you identify as? Welcome back to another episode of the Moshcast. We are here today to review an album that I've been waiting for so long <laughs> to review. It is A Beautiful Place to Drown by Silverstein. It is their 2020 record. I am so excited to review this. I've been waiting so, so, so long. Um, and it's actually kind of perfect timing to... Uh, be filming this because it's september and there's a song on this album set in september (laughs) so i'm really excited um for them for for everyone here to listen to it we did review their album that came out this year misery made me and it's still album of the year for me so there's that um but I, it seemed like everybody really enjoyed it, so I'm happy that we get to review Silver Scene again, and we will be reviewing them next month. Right? Yeah, next month. Their very yeah. first record. I'm excited for that, too. So, without further ado, let's get on with introductions. First, his perfect attendance was broken on the Eddie Munson episode. Mr. Jason Bailey. I mean, this isn't the only podcast my streak is broken. Also, same for Crash and Burn. My perfect attendance is still on for cinematic analysis, at least. Yep, there's that. And hello, I I was just struggling with the, escaping the water monster in Resident Evil 2. But, I, I'll, but I'll pause it to review this album. Oh, I am. Okay, next up, we have... Mr. Lucas Atencio, my brother in Christ, amen. Yes, it's your favorite, uh, your favorite army here today. Oh, the beautiful trans people, beautiful food people, and the beautiful people of the world, no matter what you identify as, it's the McLaughlin, the analytical, the analytical individual, the Lucas Atencio, ready to do this episode. I'm excited to do this episode. And I was in a pretty pissed off mood, pissed off mood today, and you know I'm glad to be on this one because I'm ready to again that I did a crash and burn, drop some pipe bombs, and basically be better than CM Punk. (laughs) Okay. Well, obviously you know me. I'm Sid. Again, I'm very excited to review this episode. I should. I'm gonna hope to get this vinyl soon. Hope. I want to get it so bad. All right. First song up is Bad Habits. Let's Who's get into playing? it. Me. All right, cool. Okay. That was Bad Habits. Um, Jason? Oh, there you are. Okay, let's start with you. Pretty fantastic start to this album. Wow. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal. I pretty much enjoyed this one. It's it's dope. Hell yeah. I'll go next. <clears throat> I have notes because I've listened to this before. So I just I already know what I'm gonna say. Um so meaning wise for me, this was kind of like obviously based on the title of the song. Um, keep going back to, like, a bad habit, kind of, like, treating it kind of like a hyperfixation, maybe. I mean, with how the lyrics were, that's kind of the vibe that I got. Um, I don't know. It's a great way to kick off the album. Fan-fucking-tastic. I think this might have been the first single off of the album. I could be wrong, though, but, um... Absolutely fucking phenomenal. Just, oh, magnifique. Lucas, what did you think, brother? This one, that's to me, as you said. Honestly, this one kind of hit me a little bit. A little bit close to home. 
Um, as people, uh, I said it before, and I'll say it again. I have dealt with a lot of bad habits in my life before, and um, when I listen to this again, again, I can hear it pretty clearly what it's saying to me. And I would deal with a lot of bad habits, at, and you know, still trying to conquer those things, except for with um, pornography and masturbation, and all this type of shit I'm dealing with. And you know, it's a difficult thing to go through because. As said, said it's high expectation because you don't know what the hell to do because you feel stuck. And and I said it before, it's not an easy thing to, you know, it's not an easy thing to, like, beat because you always keep trying. You always try to, you know, two weeks are good, but you keep falling back. You know what I mean? And you know, it's a difficult thing to go through. But you know, and I said before. And Conquer Five One said, "I'm not perfect, but I try every day, every day to be better." So I will, I like the song. And I, as Sid once said, a wise Sid once said, sometimes. But um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what makes a breaking album is the start and the finish. Mm-hmm. And starting off strong, we will see where the finish will go. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, just you wait till you hear the next song. <laughs> Help me. You would think that this next song would be my favorite, but it's my second favorite. I hate to disappoint you. I think oh. I know was the feature in there. The next song is called Burn It Down, featuring none other than Mr. Caleb Shomo himself. Oh, yep. Oh. Let's get into okay. it. That's our boy. Okay, uh, we're gonna start with Lucas this time. You start off with me. You start off with, with again the um the one that gets a lot of energy, and I just got jump scared. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, there was some synchronized head head banging between me and Sid over here. There, I, I don't know if Sid saw it, but I was synchronized head banging with them right here. But um, no, literally, I was synchronizing with you. Literally, I was. But I, I actually really love it because of the feature. And it's not like they actually try to mix it, but they're actually, you know, trying to, you know, actually make sure he actually is heard. Because, you know, with the last feature he was on, you know, he, they try to mix it. And again, it, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. But this was a great song by Silverstein right here. And I love it. I, I actually really love it. Again, I don't know what the meaning is going to be. I know Sid will definitely you know, give us some insight. Oh, no, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I'm going to get kicked out of the call anyways, because every time I try to look up a meeting, I get kicked out. This is stupid. Wait, I do have a computer, though. I always forget I have a computer with me. Skype hates us gays. What? That Skype hates us gays. Oh, oh, they hate us all. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's, it's, it's just what the church does, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> all right, Jason, what did you think? Yeah! Woo! Woo! Oh, we get a woo, too. Damn! Woo! Okay. We get two! Okay, Rick Flair. Wow! Caleb was a phenomenal addition to this song. Oh, yeah. You know, that's my favorite part. You know what? Caleb, thumbs up, buddy. Thumbs up. <laughs> this, thumbs it, up. <laughs> this song actually came out, I think, back in 2019, and I heard this on the radio for the first time. I it's lost epic. my shit. I hadn't listened to Silverstein in a long time. But when this song came on the radio, I was like, God damn it, I gotta get it back into Silverstein. And I did. And I fucking love this song so much. You would oh, be shocked okay. that it's not my favorite. It is my second favorite, though. Um, Caleb sounds fucking phenomenal. I mean, just what else can I say? I mean, it's perfect fit for him. It's too good for you? No, it's too perfect. I mean, it, I mean, it was brotastic. Oh, Hi, Jesus. Hi, um, but yeah, I really love the song. 
Caleb did phenomenal. The whole band in general did phenomenal, and it just fits really well. And if you didn't know, uh, whenever they toured together uh, during Warp Tour, and even their recent tour they did together, um, they have a super group called Silvertooth. The fuck Silvertooth? Silverstein and Beartooth. Oh! Okay. <laughs> he just put their names together. Oh, Derek Hopper, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would kill to see them both live. That's why I was so pissed that no one would go with me to the show. I would. Come on now. I was so pissed. I was like, please, I want to go. And no one would go with me, and I'm so mad. <laughs> but right, anyways... I- I would a gay and McDuo. Come on. I would have cried. Um, let me get the next song going. All right, so this next song is called Where Are You? <laughs> I'm right here. I was listening to the do that. You got jump scared. It played. I was like, I didn't hit shuffle. And it just made a fucking radio station based off of the album. But it played a song from the album. (laughs) It played my favorite song from the album. So I was like, what the fuck? Anyways, that was Where Are You. Uh, I'll I'll start first. Um, To me, this song kind of reminds me of like maybe trauma from a relationship or you kind of are losing yourself to keep the person around because oh maybe you're scared of being alone um and i have an experience of that i have a couple experiences of that actually um one that happened pretty recently uh but i had to do it i had to end it to better myself but there was one that really fucked me over um And all I have to say is if you're in that type of relationship, it is okay to let go of that person. It is okay. It may not feel like it, but I promise you it's okay and things will get much better when you drop that person. You do not need to lose yourself in order to keep someone else around. That's just ridiculous. Don't do it. You lose your mind over it. You lose sleep. It's not healthy. Don't do it. Um... But I really loved the song a lot, um, just based off of that meaning that I got. Um, so, uh, Jason, what do you think? Oh my god! Another standing ovation worthy song because I liked it. Wow, that was quite heavyish, and you know what? The instrumentals really kept me going here. Hell yeah. The adrenaline was was what was swag. Oh Jesus. Epic and swag. All right, Lucas. Th- those are my top two words I'll be using. I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you top two two my feet up your ass. Anyways. Swag. I'm gonna swag up your ass. Um anyways. <laughs> anyways, um with it, as I said before, again with so it's the meaning again. You son of a bitch. You son of a Listen, you know how many times I've listened to this album? I honestly, wholeheartedly right now, I don't know who my top artist is going to be for this year on my Spotify. I don't know if it's going to be Bird's Tooth. I don't. I don't. I've been listening to a lot of Silver Scene and a lot of Spirit Box, so it could be one of those three. But this album specifically, I... Always go back to it for Silverstein. Always, oh, yeah. always, always. Yeah. Um. You got you got me here because I remember and and I I didn't notice this myself, but it's kind of funny enough to get out of relationship. He knows a lot of things that you have done stupidly wrong, and also the things that like why the fuck did I fall for this person? Like. That's the thing about this. Like, I, I look back at another my relationship. And there's some good things about it, but also some bad things. And, also some, and some things, too. I'm sitting there just like, what the hell did I get myself into? That's what the main problem that I have with that is because I was losing myself around February 
I think about my Marge because, you know, she keeps, like, wanting to manipulate, continue to want the guys to lie, not stop the thing that I was saying, and, you know, call me sensitive, like, call me sensitive because she don't have the balls to call me sensitive anyways because you know how she, she knows how I am. And what pissed me off about that, too, is kind of like, um, when I became myself, when I was at my lowest moments, it's kind of like the reassurance and stuff I didn't need it. And also, like, just, just felt fake to me, honestly. And I remember I keep acting crazy, you know, continue wanting to keep following her lead. And we really fall into this spell of, like, not, doing not the smartest things, but continue to want to do things for her. Kind of being her yes man. Mm-hmm. And everyone, everyone noticed it, but I didn't. And again, as I said before, it fucked me up. Fucked me up pretty bad. And as I said before, if you're losing yourself with that person, it's not, wor- it's not even worth the fight, honestly. Because if that person is making you the way that you, that, you know, like the way that you feel, you know, losing yourself and also making you feel like absolute shit. It's hard to let go, but would you rather live a, a life with a great partner and, you know, have a great rest of your life with that person or continue to live with uncertainty and toxicity? That's what you should ask yourself. hmm So, that can I don't know if they're trying to tell me something or sit out here throwing daggers at my heart, but I don't know. What am I doing? Throwing daggers at my heart over here. Why? Because all these memes you're throwing at me. It's like, hey, this is the meeting. Oh, but just because, Lucas, we've been through the same shit. I know. And, and it, I- makes, <laughs> it makes you sad. I know. <laughs> but anyways, all right. Next song is Infinite. All right, uh, I'll start this one off as well because I kind of got a meaning from it, and then that way everybody else can just go from there uh, if they didn't get a meaning. Um, so to me, this kind of feels like a you feel some type of pain, like mentally, so like depression or something or anxiety, and it kind of feels like it's going to go on forever, and it's infinite. Uh, and it just keeps going, 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 and going, and it's hell. Um, it's an awful fucking feeling that I wouldn't even wish upon my worst enemy. Um, it's an awful fucking feeling. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say from that. I mean, the meaning kind of just speaks for itself, um, to me at least. Um, Lucas, go ahead. I have no words right now. I I don't usually know we speechless at the first three songs, but um, I guess I'm fucking speechless because all these three things um, are, are pretty much a big factor in my life as of right now, or not right now, but you know, they've been a big factor in my life as of recently, and um, and I also kind of crying through. I'm watching the movie as well, um, Five Feet Apart. Shout out to that movie, by the way. And shout out to Cap for getting that, that and give me into that movie. You little bitch, I'm gonna, fu- I'm gonna fuck you up I, once you have to see you again. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up. Um. Anyways, uh, with that song, honestly, I love, I really love it. I love how again, the summer scene. They've been very, they've been very vocal about mental health and also very vocal about topics that that get not really talked about in music, but a lot is talked about with other people. I'm, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see um, that with them, honestly, because, you know, you know, a lot of these things need to be talked about, too. And not necessarily addressed, but, you know, need to be taken seriously. I have said for mental health should be 100% taken seriously. Mm-hmm. Why be all this? Not even a thing. Motherfucker. Have you seen some of the things that we went through in our lives? Wait. The problem I have with people, 
The problem I have with water people, and this is why I don't interrupt with water people, my wife. And I become very antisocial. Not very really antisocial, but I'm very like introverted sometimes. The reason why I am is because of the people that I meet is because I'm afraid to be judged of what I do and also be afraid to also to express myself because you know when once I was before I was bullied a lot from it and also make fun of because of my voice, make fun of me because the way I talk, the way I think, the way I do things. Oh, all this shit. And that's why sometimes with me I keep it to myself because you know I don't want another person to um use that against me. Because there are people in my life that I talked about with and they use that against me. And it's just fucked up. I'm just glad that I'm not talking to them anymore. I'm glad that I'm not able to see it anymore. I'm just glad to just do my own shit. And set the people that, you know, are the roots of my fucking tree. And not just branches and leaves of my tree. And that's all I'll say that much. No, you're exactly right. I, I'm the same fucking way, man. When I'm just, I'm introverted because of the people in my life that have treated me so fucking terribly. And have used shit against me. I'm literally the exact same way, dude. Because, because it's, it's. It's funny how it's so similar, but so different at the same time. Yeah. But basically, both of us are reincarnated with personalities together. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. What the fuck? Who, how does... I don't, get, I don't get this. The world works in mysterious ways, brother. Did you manifest it in my life, world? Hello? <laughs> God told me? Hello? Apparently. All right, Jason, what did you think of Infinite? Wow. The meaning speaks for itself pretty much. I mean, I mean, I had people judge me for what I do and for being for being a for being a for being a, 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 a I don't know what to say, really. Um, for for liking what I like pretty much. That's mm-hmm. all put it at uh, and yeah um that's all i gotta say really i mean the phenomenal song speaks for itself i mean i mean yeah. i got touched for for liking what i like i mean i mean that's pretty much self-explanatory all right i'm getting back to the uh spotify app give me one moment um i mean yo what's up the yeah. best thing not all of it yet, but I'm gonna get some more in a minute. Oh, that's huh? You give me one piece and I have like three of them. Um, as I get to take out the box. You gonna steal the box from me? You gonna steal the box away from me, Mom? No, that's my pizza box. No. <laughs> okay. Um, but I mean, the lesson to take away is never stop liking what you like and being who you are just because other people don't like what you like or like or don't like you yeah that's their loss not yours wrestling yep you're all right and the thing about that too and i and i hate to be that and i hate to kind of cut it off a little bit but you know the the the, i'm gonna take my gum out for this because my voice has been up and down because this gum is very minty and it kind of Messes, messes up my voice a little bit, but um, what I've learned is that um, if people are not going to love you for you, and the people that are not going to respect you for being yourself, then they don't deserve being your wife. Simple as that. Like, you know, there's maybe certain things. Like, this is the thing about people. You not supposed to agree on every single thing. You know, there's some things with Jason and I we disagree on. Me and me and Sid disagree on some things, but we respect it. Yeah, and that and that is the thing too that people need to learn, especially in the religion, especially in other places and and the um topics that we talk about, is to respect other people no matter what, and also not to judge. And that is the problem with other people; they're very like judgmental and also very the issues of um 
just being stuck stuck to their beliefs and also thinking that they're right even though they're not. It's just an opinion that you have. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too with with me. I'm just like, you think that you're right with it, but you're not. And this is when they become ignorant, and I hate ignorant people. I do. I hate judgmental people too. Mm-hmm. They say, "Oh, do sometimes." It depends on people for me, like fake. Like, like, I mean, but you don't see it that way. But say that scripted, but they judge you because they they think that it's fake. Yeah. And, and and they would hit on you for it. I dealt with that in school so many times. Mm-hmm. I I okay. And that's why sometimes I'm nervous to say that 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 I'm a fan of of wrestling. I said well, that when I say that. I'm here to tell you, you shouldn't be. If those people don't like it, don't literally do this. But fuck those people. No, I'd rather not. I just said don't literally do it. No, not literally, Jason. Jeez, no, but seriously, uh, oh, those yeah. people don't fucking matter. They, it, I mean, it's one thing to be like, oh, it's okay if you like that. I don't like that. Whatever. Because that just means that they respect it. I, I, just, just at least keep it respectful. Yeah. Exactly. But if you're like, oh, boo, 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 like being an elitist or just being an asshole, fuck those people. You don't need those people in your life. They don't matter. They're nothing. Sorry, but that's the truth. So, all right. Next song is Shapeshift. Shaky Shift. Go <sighs> okay, uh... All right. Jason, you go first. All right. Holy shit. It's just holy shit. What a final song that was. Oh, we just album has not been disappointing. And that's up to word for it, man. Because I'm liking this. Hell yeah. All right, Lucas. What? Okay, I just watched it finish the movie. What the fuck? I'm about to cry now. What the fuck? You got a sad song and now you got that movie going. Yep. <laughs> sad song in a movie. I heard this the lyrics of the song and I wasn't hearing this. I, I don't know. I'm overstimulated with sadness and like I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. Oh, I'm flustered. Um I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I I love the song honestly. This is this is the one the song that just it does like just so straight for the heart this time. It's just like it like goes around it. It cuts every single inch of your heart. And it takes it out with you. Like it doesn't like this straight stab in, hey, this is the difference, this is the song that you feel. But no, this is like to me, it's around it too. And it feel, you just feel the song when you first hear it. That's that, that's the first thing for me. It's just a whole, it's like a, it's a whole thing around the heart, not just through it, but all around the two. That's what I feel. Um, for me, the vibes I got were not feeling good enough. Um, like in a relationship or a friendship, whatever. Um, and changing for someone instead of being yourself and it kind of being like draining in a way. Um, and also got the vibes of like being manipulated by somebody in a way, if that makes any sense. Um, but I have been through all of those things, um, with many people in my life. And I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I can recognize those signs now and, not have those people in my life because it's I deserve better than that Mm -hmm. um and I'm I'm really proud that I'm able to recognize those signs now um because it (laughs) took me quite some time and a lot of heartache to get here but I'm I'm proud of myself so yeah 
Yeah. Be proud of yourself about it. What yeah. you about that, like, I dealt with that, well, as you say, that you're good enough and you feel mentally exhausted. And that's why sometimes I go, I go, like, with you is because, like, you know the signs of weight, and, and, and I, I don't sometimes. You know those signs better than I do. Mm-hmm. And that's why I go to you. It's like, hey, um, what the fuck does this mean over here? What, what, I, that's all it's kind of saying. It's kind of like, I can at least know because you, like, you read something, it's like, that is manipulation. It's like, you, like, know straight through them. Because a lot of people, surprisingly, try to, like, use a tactic manipulation of, like, trying to guilt trip other people, too. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. It fucking sucks. And, you know, I'm, as, as you said, too, like, I'm at the point in my life where I dealt with a lot of those friendships and dealt with a lot of those, a lot of those things. And I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of changing myself for other people that they don't deserve. Like, yep. you only said... You only said 50% of me, but not 100% of me at all. Hell, let me get something clear into the people that I dealt with into the little thick-ass skull right here. Let me hammer some nails in your head here. Pin us out. That would be nearly impossible. Well, well, it's nearly (laughs) impossible, but it's possible. No, it's pretty much impossible. <laughs> if, you can, if you imagine it, it's possible. But I don't want to. It hurts my brain. It's going to hurt your brain, all right. But anyways, like, the reason why you try to, the people try to do this in the first place is because that they just, again, as I said before and I say it again, it's because they're stuck to themselves. They're self-centered and narcissistic. They only think about themselves and not other people. That is the issue that I have with other people is that when I truly feel about something that, that triggers me, true, that, that also I feel about, that I feel different, and they like try to manipulate and try to think that they're right, it pisses me off because I don't have my freedom. Because what they about me, and a lot of people know this, do not clip my wings. We were literally talking about this before this call, too. I want my freedom. And I want to express myself fully and respectfully. But if you don't respect that and respect my opinion, and you continue to piss me off, I don't mind dropping you where people want their gas to be dropped. Simple as that. I don't mind dropping you like basically Don Mysterious career is going to drop in two years. I don't mind dropping you in Italian's career. I'm going on and on. Because I'm not going to allow you to clip my wings. I'm not going to allow you to take away my freedom and take away that I'm passionate about. If I don't want to talk about a topic, there's a reason why I don't. And if you can't understand that, then try to. But if you're going to try to think that you're right, I'm going to show you something that's wrong. It's you. Hello. People know my wife, no matter their family, friends, strangers. I'm tired of no, I'm you're absolutely tired. right, man. I'm sick and tired of them. And I don't want to punch every single one of them. Well, that would just be stooping to their level. And we don't want that. Well, it'd be stupid to them the hostile, too, and breaking their faces, too. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I had to get a charger and get some gum. All right. The next song is called All On Me. Here we go. That was all on me. I'll start. Uh, There's a roly poly only on the floor. Yeah, what now? You know the little potato bugs? 
Wait, there's one? Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's one right here on my floor. I trapped it because I'm going to let it outside. Not right now, after the podcast. Um, Oh, dang. But um, to me, the vibes or the meanings that I got from the song, um, maybe like mental health struggles getting in the way of something. Um, Whether that be like a friendship, relationship, whatever uh, is going on in your life. Um, and thinking you're getting better, but you're not. Um, and also just needing somebody to be there. What the fuck did you do? <laughs> I am not the bug collector. I don't even like bugs unless they're roly polyolies. That's fine. I was um, like, I got no damn spiders. I will jump. Oh, out don't of- even say that. Ooh. I hate spiders. I fucking uh, I don't like them. Nah. Come on. <laughs> anyway. No, come, on. come on. You can be spider. You, you, you can be a spider fluid. No. Person. Come no. on. Be a spider fluid person. Come on. I'm totally okay with not being that. Um. But yeah, those were the vibes that I got from the song. I loved the saxophone solo. I thought it was fucking dope. Um. And it fit the song really well. The song was beautiful. Like instrumentally beautiful um i loved it i just absolutely loved it uh jason wow (laughs) absolutely stupendous stupendous i'm gonna take this bug outside you guys keep talking what a great song that i really enjoyed it it had such a phenomenal vibe to it all right, Lucas, go ahead. Oh man, oh, I, 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 I gotta, I gotta talk out of my lungs. Um, so this song, honestly, as I, as Sid said, is honestly instrumentally beautiful, honestly, and I, I love it. I really do love it. And as it disappears all the way to hell, um, <laughs> um. I, I love it. I really do love it, you know, from start to from start and the finished one, you know, it was like very spacey and like instrumentic with it. I don't know necessarily the, the lyrics is because, you know, I'm probably kicked out of this car if I do anyways. So yeah, honestly, I love it. I actually really do love the song, honestly, and I'm starting to love this album too. And as I said before, you know, mental health should be taken seriously. Um, I'm tired of people, you know, not seeing it as a real issue, but it is a real issue, you know. Now, well, you no, know, especially now that a lot of people like are vilify and hate it and try to make it a bad thing, especially with with us dealing with mental health every single day, like with depression, anxiety, all that type of shit. Like, it should be uh, taken seriously, as I said before. Like, not necessarily like talked about to all these different different environments and such but I feel that she would definitely take it more seriously because again you don't know what a person is going through daily so as I said before don't judge a person just because again they look you differently or they walk differently there might there might be something going on with them so yeah as my hair is basically being my hair at the moment but yeah, I'm excited to see what the next song is about, and let's just get into it. Oh, I'm so excited for this song! This is my favorite song of the album. If you haven't noticed, I, I one, think I noticed. I think I've noticed because you brought a language. This one is called Madness. Oh my fucking god! Uh, we'll oh, yeah. have we'll have Jason go first. Jason goes wow. That's just a oh, wow. It wowed me. I'm so because glad of how it great you. it was. It had some awesome lyrics and a great vibe. Hell yeah! All right, Lucas. I don't know what the hell just happened. I'm looking up the um, the, the song at the moment. 
as I should, because Genius will have all of that. I got, I, I, I got, I know Genius got me. Okay. Genius is Geico because they, 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 they saved me. Oh, um, okay. they, they, um, they, no, it's all of them because I'm in good hands. Always in good hands. Great, great hands. Are they Joseph <laughs> Quinn's hands? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. No, you're right. <laughs> yes. No. No. His hands are great. And I wanted to use them against me. Ayo? <laughs> there's no Ayo. There's some truth to it. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, with this song, honestly, as I as I kind of read the lyrics, um, I see honestly with I, I can see the relationship being very, very messy. That's how I see it. You know, you just feel not love, but you feel very pissed off about it. And you feel that person is really hammering the nails into the cross with you. Why do you feel like you're all chained up from, from all the things, you know, they have said to you and all that type of things. And I said before, what was that like that? It's not envy. It's not supposed to hate or anything like that. It's supposed to be patient. That's what it's supposed to be. Like, it's supposed to be patient. It's supposed to be giving that care to other people. That's what it's supposed to be like. You know, that's the thing that, you know, a lot of people say. Because a lot of people say they love them, but they're not true up to the word about it. Because the thing is, if you actually do love them, then you actually will care about them. And if you care, if you actually love them, then you will accept them for the DR. If you love them, then you will be you will be able to judge, and you feel like that person is home to you. That's not usually how it is, but some people, you know, a lot of people now say that, and they're not true to their word about it, or don't keep up with their word about it. Those are pretty much like. You know, you say a Cheeto fuck? I said Wait. Cheeto puff, but same thing, I guess. Cheeto puff. That's puff. what I call my. Uh, that's what me and Tyler call my ex. Cheeto puff. Oh. Oh, I didn't know he's orange. Well, he's a ginger. Oh, no soul. Yeah. Um, yeah, after what he did to me. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heart, no soul, Johnny Gargano style. Um. But as I said before, and that's said for like, you know, some people are very young, so you actually know about it. See, like, if you don't know that you're one, then again, always explore what, what you want. Because again, don't limit yourself to people you want to have in your life. And also, don't limit yourself to people you want to love, too. Because you can't stick to one genre of music. You can't stick to one aspect of wrestling. You can't stick to one genre of video games. You can't stick to just one thing. You have to explore out and, you know, we'll see what is your style. You know, for my wrestling style, you know, I like, te- I like technical wrestling. I love brutal wrestling. Hell, I can go in and I like deathmatch re- death shit. I love white tubes. I love, I love explosive shit, you know? But, you know, always do not limit yourself. Always be with most of what you want to have. And that's what I said. I realized real my, my, why are my fingers so fast? What the fuck? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I love this song. <laughs> I can't tell you love this song. I love this song so much. Um, so, I mean, pretty much what Lucas said was why I like this song so much was because of relating to it. Um, and also, it's kind of like, um, you know, when we did What Separates Me From You, how a lot of those songs are just so good because it's just, like, one of those songs that kind of, like, musically soothes your brain. Um, oh, yeah. This is one of those songs. Um, another fun yeah. fact, uh, the feature, Princess Nokia, I could totally be butchering that, and I apologize, um, but she is actually a fan of the band. And I believe she's a rapper, but she is a fan of the band, and they featured her on this song. And that, oh, yeah, that to me is fucking incredible. I love that for them. 
Um, this song is just so good. This may honestly be song, um, my my most listened to song. I'm not sure. We'll we'll see it uh, in a few months when the uh, Spotify rap drops. But don't be surprised if it's not this song. I, you can't be surprised with something so surprising about you. It's gonna it's gonna be surprising this year. I just have a feeling it may not be Beartooth. This may be the first year that I've had my Spotify account that Beartooth is not number one. But I don't, I don't know who it's going to go to. I don't. Beartooth is like number five at this point. No, Beartooth is still number one. But I have just I'm collectively. Oh, what's your prediction? What's your prediction? All right. So I don't know. This is going to be my order. How this is going to go. Okay. okay. I think Silver Seems we won. Okay. Beartooth two, Spirit Box three. What about four and five? Okay, I don't know. Um, let's see. You know what bands I like. I know, I know. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I see Paramore at five, but not okay. four. And I'm, well, I'm gonna go with a solo artist, actually. Are you about to say Harry Styles? Yeah. I haven't really listened to a lot of Harry Styles this year, surprisingly. You have it? Not a whole lot. Not like last year. Okay, so that's not okay. That's going to be off the list then. Um, I could tell you it would probably be between two bands. Four and five, I can see. I can Par- see. Paramore maybe five. They were, I think they were on mine last year. I will probably say Heart Milk. Uh, Heart Milk, Heart Milk could be one. Heart two. Milk? I haven't listened I, to them a lot this year either. Damn, what, what the fuck? Okay. I got in the spirit box. What do you want from me? I don't know. Okay, we're gonna leave it four for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna see where where all this ends up. I think it, for four it could either be Wage War or the Plot in You. Maybe wage, wage War. War. I was thinking Wage War. I did not say it. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where I I I don't know what's gonna happen. I I don't know. I love Bear Tooth. I do, but I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know. It it I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, you don't know. Um, no, I don't. I, I mean, that's just a fact. But yeah, so we have one, uh, including this next one. One, two, three, four, oh. five, mm-hmm. six, five. Five songs left. Hold oh on, boy. Let me do math. Hold on. I got to do math. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you're right. We should try to skip on through this because I got to get this fucking wig off. <laughs> Anyways, this next song is called Say Yes. Here we go. Yes. Um, to me, the vibes that I got, or meaning-wise, was kind of like maybe being in a relationship or friendship at the wrong time, and now you feel like it's the right time, like you're reuniting and, you know, things are going good and it's the right time and you're going about it the right way. Um, I wouldn't know what that's like. Oh, I have some stories about that. <laughs> but, but, you know... Um, I still love the song nonetheless. It's very upbeat. It's very Silversteiny. It's very catchy. I love it very much. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, go ahead. Of course, it claps. I mean, hello. This album is great. I mean, I don't. Well, you, you, you just said my take. The album is great, and I like it. I like the song. Perfect. perfect. All right, Lucas. No, it's not over, Jason. But anyways, um, I have a story about that. I have two stories about that, actually. And I love both of them. And uh, yes, we have arguments. Yeah, I had an argument with them. One of them, I'm um, Kayla today. But, you know, arguments and all that shit happens. You know, different opinions happen. You know, something flare up and emotions happen, you know? Things happen like that. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad about it. But I'm too sorry about that, actually. So I remember one time, um, me and Kai have been friends since, since I was in elementary school. And, um, it's not by the way. Me and him and friends were over 12, 13 years around then. And 
you know, we haven't taught this much, but we know each other since then. But sixth grade is when we got to know each other. Um, like to know each other a little bit because of her sister. Because one time I was bullied, I was bullied by my teachers. Because, you know, I was doing something, I, was, I don't know what I did in math class, but it was, it was something that got a teacher pissed off, and the teacher was mad, and I would start crying, because I, I just felt hurt, and honestly, his words hurt me, because he said, I'm not your puppet, I'm not your dad, I'm your teacher. And I remember that I have walked away, or ran away to, to a um, different side of the school, and her sister and her friend and also another friend of hers as well saw me and we decided to play Jenga together. And um and boyfriend teachers they found us. I was sad and I was sad because I know what's gonna be next, you know, punishment for me as well, because I was going for a rough time. This is when my serious side of thoughts came in. This is also when also my depression started too. And um, so with that, too, it was just difficult to go with. And we haven't talked with each other. We haven't, you know, talked with each other for over two years. And we reunited because we were both at the same school around the time in eighth grade. And I didn't recognize him. And it took me a minute to see her, her sister again. I'm like, wait, is that guy? And that's just what we started talking. Ever since eighth to ninth grade, me and him has been absolute best friends. He has been with me for a lot of shit this year. You know, when my dog died, he was right there with me. When my my ex broke up with me, he actually stood up for me and didn't didn't buy into the plan of my ex's revenge. That is true, G. Again, he's crazy sometimes. And yes, it gets my nerves. And sometimes I just want to punch him in the face because he's an adorable face. Pause. Um, but I love him to death. I love him to death. And same thing with the other person, Michaela. We've been childhood friends for a long time. And we have reunited um, over a decade. And it took us to be in the same school again to reunite. And ever since then, we have been great friends. Nothing with that. Yes, we have our moments and such. Our both of our lives, you know, colliding and we both will go our separate ways. But knowing that she's still there and still the love for me and still cares about me, it shows a lot. So yeah, a little bit about that. And you will definitely will see them on the podcast. You will definitely will see them. All right. The next song is called Stop. That was stop. Uh, Lucas, you go first. Stop. Wait a minute. Anyways, um, I like it. I like it. And again, not again. Uh, my first and my favorite is the last one. Oh, Honestly. you like say yes? What? That's your favorite. Say yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I just like how upbeat it is, and you know, just again, the story I just said about the two best friends in the world. So that was a really wide too, but mm. I, I love I love the song though. So so far this album has been great. So oh yeah, Jason. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a great song. It had such a phenomenal vibe to that song, and wow. And in, enjoy enjoy some Wendy's. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I love how you guys were like it's such a great vibe, so upbeat, and the meaning is just like not the same at all. Um, so to me, the, fe- the the meaning I got was kind of feeling really low in life um, and feeling like you've you've gotten out of the lowest part of your life or like your depression state, but it just kind of got worse. Um, I definitely know what that's like to feel like you think you came out of it, but it's it feels like it got worse. Um, and it sucks. It sucks a lot, but... I love the song nonetheless. Um, so this next one, I don't want to say it's deep, but it's very real. 
Um, when I talk about the meaning, I'll go first for the next one because I have like read the meaning and everything. So this next one is called September 14th. Yeah. So, uh, the meaning of the song is pretty heavy. Um, if you, I believe it's the Vietnam War. Um, but when people were being drafted for that, um, they would basically pick names and whatever out of either a bowl or I can't remember what, what it was. Um, but they basically will call like your birth date i believe um yep. and september 14th was the very first date that was called um so the song is basically about you know all of that um and i i i think it's it was done really well um and you don't really hear modernly within this realm um you don't really hear songs about that as of as of late um, which is weird. You'd think that, you know, we'd still hear about it, but no. Um, but I think that they did a really good job with the song. Um, and as far as like the vibe of like instrumentally, I got very much early 2000s and I, it reminded me of like very old silver scene and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, Jason. Wow, that was quite a heavy meeting. So expect a trigger warning here. Well, no. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say a trigger warning. I don't think. No, I don't have to use it. I don't think so. Eh. Oh well. well. I don't. I don't think so. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll either talk. way, that's a pretty heavy meeting. And you know, I, I think I think that they did a good job writing the song based on that meeting. Yeah. Uh, Lucas. It's very unique and very different than what I hear because a lot of my fans don't really go into like what's been going on in the history and such. And, you know, going to, you know, a big event and a big thing with Vietnam War like that, it's a, it's great to see, you know, like the, like band, the bands are experimenting. I think they're pretty good. And, you know, I met some people, you know, veterans and all that stuff with the Vietnam War. And I was a thing for research. That's always how, I always have been. And I really think that this song has, um, honestly, it kind of hit home to me. My dad didn't serve, in, serve, serve anything with that because he uh, was not born around that time. Like, he was born because it was 69, I think it was. But he was only, like, six years old, I think. But it's, cr it's crazy thing that, you know, a lot of bands don't get into it. But once a person does, like a band does, it's very unique in its own way. And that's what I love about it. Hell so, yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right. Uh, this next one is coming down. I have to go back to Spotify. Okay. was coming down by Silverstein. Um Jason, you go first. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. Coming down. Wow. They made that a phenomenal song. And yeah, what, what what a great vibe to it. All right, okay, Lucas. <laughs> um, I'll go next. Huh? Um, <laughs> so the vibe or the meetings that I got from it were having to do with mental health and kind of like forgetting what it feels like to be okay and to not have dealt with mental health struggles um i don't think i've ever known what what that's like to be 
completely honest with you. Um, so that's kind of sad, but it's the truth. Um, I, I know many people, uh, especially my age, um, that, that definitely feel like that. And it's something that is talked about, but not as much. Um, cause I feel like that's like kind of one of the saddest things is like having one point in your life where you're actually okay and you don't know what all this stuff means and you didn't struggle with it and it's like really sad to think about um but that's just me uh lucas go ahead okay all right i have to stretch out my, my back here yeah i fucking feel that well well this chair is very flexible this chair is I, not and, and i'm not flexible pause um <laughs> wait hey, pause. Oh? Pause. Pause. Wait a second. Hey, yo. Um. Th- yeah. No. Yeah. Just, just don't. Just don't break my leg. Um, Go ahead. Break your leg, but not in a, but in a good way. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> but I, I honestly, this song to me again, it didn't hit the way I wanted to. But honestly, the instrumentally was what I heard. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. I have to listen to it more just to get into it. But honestly, it's still good to me. So good. Yeah. All right. This is the last song. It is called Take What You Give. That was Take What You Give. Now, so we can just get this all done, two birds with one stone. We're going to say what we thought of the song and give our ratings. So, Jason, you go first. Phenomenal end to this album. Just a phenomenal song. And, and oh Silverstein, <laughs> good band. Great band. Actually, legendary band. Fun fact, they're Canadian. All right, all right. <laughs> That's oh yes, a Canadian band. Let's we go. talk about Canada all the time, and we've listened to like three within the past year. Swag. Oh jeez, no. I mean, we're all swag. Here. I don't so want to be swag. You ruined it, you bitch. That's a ten out of ten. <laughs> Hell yeah. A seven. Right. Out of- he said ten out of ten. I thought he said seven out of ten. No, he said ten. Ten oh. out of ten. All right, Lucas, what did you think of the song, and what is your rating of the album? Okay. Mm. I had to think of the, my, my rating because I like the last, the last, the latest album a lot, so this is going to take a little bit to beat this one because the latest one is number two. A little bit for It's number two of my best albums. Of Silverstein? Yeah, the new one. The okay. new one for Silverstein. I don't mm. know. So, excuse me. Um. So with that, this one, the song was good way to end it off. I'm going to give us a nine and a half. Okay. Because the, the last album was very good. I feel like this, the Beautiful Face Drown and the latest one, I think they step up a little bit. And because also I hit more with the latest album more than this one, honestly. Mm-hmm. And especially the last song of, um, I think it was Misery that the album was called. It's a Misery. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the last song like just made me tear up, so that's also like his bonus points too. But um, yeah, honestly, a really good album again. Like for the last two albums that I made, they definitely have stayed consistent. Because the thing about like when people go into like the later years of their work, they usually start like pummeling down a little bit. So oh, they just keep going. They keep going. They keep going. That's the thing. They keep going. You know, what a lot of the bands, you know, going into, I like to say their middle age years, they yeah. usually, like, not as good as it once were. But with Silver Skin, they keep that up. Hey, listen, when we, when we listen to their first record, you're really going to be sticking with that statement because that sound compared to now is totally different. I might I might wait the current time more the old time. You don't know with me. 
Oh, but you'll know the difference. I'm not, I, I know the difference is all right. But let us do records, and um, you never know. I can probably make it a tire out of this. I don't know. All right, Sid, what you got? All right. Um, so I loved the last song. I think it's a great way to end the album. You know me, I say it every time. This is always a great way to start an album and a great way to end an album. Bad habits and take yeah. what you give are the best ways for this album. Um, personally, if I had to pick between the two, uh, Misery Made Me and, and this album, I would pick this one. Because for me, this album came out at a pretty perfect time. Mm-hmm. This came out, I want to say, two months after my breakup. And a lot of these songs I really relate to uh, in that way and helped push me through um, trying to heal from it, I should say. Not move on, but heal. Um, I just, oh. I love this song a lot, or this album a lot. I mean, it's got, first of all, it's got fucking Caleb Shomo on it. So, I mean, are yeah. points points for that? Um, so, uh, I will say this. Silverstein, you are back in the Hall of Fame again with A Beautiful Place to Drown, because I'm giving this album a 20 out of 10. I was going to guess the 22 out of 10, but I was wrong. I mean, you were close, but... I'm never close. <laughs> I'm not Anyways, gonna... all right, Jason, outros, go ahead. Thank you for watching this episode of the Moj Cast by TikTok, where we had a swag time oh. for doing A Beautiful Place to Drown by Silverstein. Wait. Next episode, happy birthday, Emilio, because we'll be doing his request. And that's pretty much just. Listening to the uh, top ten songs that he likes from any band that he likes, it, just so it can be like more personal to him. So yeah, be sure to look for for Emilio's birthday episode. And yeah, again, be sure to wish happy birthday to Emilio. Happy early birthday to Emilio at the yep. time of filming. So thank you for watching, and look forward to the next episode. All right, Lucas. Yes, hello, and, and yes, I got my leg up because, you know, this is how I sit, so deal with it. Look, look at this. Look at this synchronized light up. I oh, This is how I always sit. When my back hurts, I have to switch different positions because my fucking back hurts and I'm arthritic. Continue. <laughs> so, Mosh, Mosh Cass, again, as we do, a million requests. We got other things on the road. You just got to keep up with us. We also got an interview coming up, too. And then we got an interview coming up again on Sunday. And I will be there. Um, I, will. I know you will. Uh, Crash and Burn, we're doing top 10 favorite wrestlers. Top 10 favorite wrestlers. And First I, time top 10 video. And mine is up to 16 because I just can't need 10 wrestlers. So. I'll be there. How about you, Sid? When are we doing that? This coming Friday. Yeah, I'll be there. Why not? And I'm just going to be back for that. And, um. Again, cinematic analysis. Um, is it flat? Is it Fleet Bird or Fry Guy or what the fuck? Free Guy. Free Guy. I was close. I was close. It is on HBO or Disney Plus. I can't remember. Right. Could be on both. All right. Sweet. All right. And so sorry for that. And again, you can follow me on Instagram, Lucas.Sensio336. Follow me on TikTok at Lucas underscore Rainmaker. I will be back and posting TikTok. Just having time to do it because of college things. And dealing with this podcast and dealing with all the shenanigans people was people put yeah, mainly me. Yeah, mainly you sometimes sometimes. Sometimes more like all the time, every day, twenty four seven. But more every second more, of the day. But you know. Listen, I'm chaotic, all right. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Moshcast. Again, this was a beautiful place of drama by Silver Scene. I had such an amazing time listening to this album again. I love this album so much. It's just, ugh, I can't wait to get it on vinyl. I'm still waiting for It's Remade Me, so hopefully it'll come in this month. Crossing my fingers. But I had a lot of fun. I can't wait to, uh, <laughs> okay, Lucas, to do the next episode. But after that, be The Sicky Pee by Beartooth. <laughs>
Okay, we yep. have reviewed everything by Beartooth. Everything. Minus the deluxe edition songs, which maybe next year we'll get to that. Uh, maybe. Probably. Because, why not? Um, and then, again, our last Silver Scene review will be for next month. Very excited for that. We're going to be viewing their very first record. Phenomenal. That's Jason. That's Lucas. I've Sid. Peace. All right. Oh, okay.